All right, so I know I've been away for a few months now, but hear me out. At least I have something new and fresh for you guys to experience. And yes, it's the Akita 250cc by Mutt Motorcycles all the way from Birmingham, England. So let's check it out. So I know what you guys are thinking. It looks a lot like the XSR 155 which I previously had and as you can see it has the same color scheme with the satin silver and the tan or brown seat. And it also has this retro classic vibe to it but unlike the XSR 155 this one just screams pure classic and retro design. And for those of you who don't know Mutt is actually a motorcycle brand that hails all the way from Birmingham, England. So Mutt started way back 2013, but prior to that, they've been building custom bikes, much like our local builders like Tokwa Garage and Iron Nakina. And in 2013, they've launched their first semi-mass produced bike. But unlike most Euro bikes, Mutt actually ships their bikes all the way from Birmingham and then to Singapore, where most of their motorcycles are being shipped all over Asia. And another fun fact is, this engine in particular is actually from a Suzuki. So yes, this is an English bike with a Japanese heart which isn't exactly a bad thing because Japanese bikes are known to be reliable so maintenance and repair won't be an issue and speaking of engines this is a 250 cc engine air cooled hence there is no radiator here and based on my first riding experience this engine isn't really the fastest but it handles itself pretty well you have more than enough power to overtake most scooters in the Philippines but when compared to my Zwart 200 I think the Zwart will still leave this bike behind and it's partially because on how this bike is built as you can see this bike is an all metal build even the swing arm is tube metal the frame is also metal and from what I can see I think the only alloy parts are the crush guard and this side guard and maybe this one as well and obviously another part that's adding to the weight is this awesome looking spokes wheels these are 18 inch wheels and tires with knobby rubbers that come in stock so these tires look great and they grip really well by the way these tires are non-tubeless so be careful when you're driving them off-road and speaking of grip obviously this is a scrambler bike so it's meant for the road and off-road use and with those kind of knobbies and a spoke wheels this bike is perfect for off-road yes the tires are grippy but the bike is just a little bit heavy and also these pegs are actually facing forward instead of facing backwards yes they feel comfortable but I actually prefer the look of rear set pegs more especially for a scrambler build like this one and speaking of scrambler i would actually compare this more closely to a himalayan especially with the retro classic look the high and round headlight and the front set pegs so it's undeniably comfortable on long rides so back here we have two shocks along with a solid grab rail here and up front we have regular non-inverted front shock they do the job pretty well but don't expect them to absorb mini vibrations which you definitely feel when riding this bike i'm not saying it's a bad thing i think it adds character given that it's an old school classic looking bike so i'm totally cool with the setup as long as it would look as equally cool as this okay so now let's talk about the details and speaking of details take a look at this seat they call this diamond stitch pattern so it has this brown leather to it with the mud logo here at the back it's not the softest nor the stiffest it's comfortable but it's kind of slippery but i can forgive it for that and then moving here towards the tail we have a combination tail light and plate light we also have this reflector here which i would most likely remove and of course an aluminum rear fender and by the way this seat is not removable there's no storage under here i think they placed all the storage here so you can just pull this out on both sides here you'd see the battery and some slight storage on the other side just take a look at this. It looks very old school. We have this long tubular foot brake. We also have this girthy swing arm. This one, by the way, is aftermarket. I'll let you guys hear the sound, but it sounds really good. The video probably won't do it any justice. So I would definitely opt for this kind of pipe because it suits the bike really well. Okay, so moving up front, we have a matte finish or satin finish silver here, which I'm a big fan of. I drove this for almost a week and a full tank on this costs a thousand pesos to fill it all the way up 
As for the lights, we have a metal turn signal here. It's blacked out and it's LED. So they feel very premium and sturdy, unlike with other bikes where they flap around when you're riding it. So I'm really digging this bullet type turn signals. And being a classic bike, there's not much tech on this except for the side stand sensor and of course ABS. So this bike has dual ABS, which is a must for me for every bike. And as for the 125ccs, it only has combination brakes for the front and rear. So now let's proceed with the driver-centric controls. So up here on the left, we have low and high beam. We also have this yellow passing light, your left and turn signals, and of course, the horn. <laughs> and on the right, we have your start button. As for the fit and finish, they're not the best for a 250kA bike, but because they're trying to go for that classic old school look, I think it's okay. This gauge is pretty appropriate. It only shows the basics. So you have your fuel gauge, your total kilometers traveled, and a gear indicator. So pretty much everything that you'll need is here. I would say everything is pretty standard and generic, including this round side mirrors. They look okay, but I would probably prefer bar and side mirrors. Also, the brake and clutch levers are fine. Nothing wrong with them, except for maybe the braking power. I feel like you'll need more time and distance to come to a complete stop. But this isn't exactly a very fast bike, so it's totally fine for my daily use. I also like the grips here. It has this diamond pattern to it. And it's like a two-piece handle grip. So whenever you twist the throttle, this one spins individually. I guess other bikes have this, but I'm glad Mutt was able to add this grips on this bike. Moving up front, we have a pretty generic headlight. This one's halogen and it comes with this grille. I wish they were a bit bigger so it would match the bike and these huge tires even more. But then again, this is exactly why you got this bike. For you to further customize it and tweak it to your liking. So everything here is meant to be upgraded from the headlights to the signal lights up till the shocks. So it's really up to the users to customize this to their liking. Much like the founders of this bike because that's exactly how they came up with the Mott brand and this Akita 250cc. So this is the Akita 250cc version. There's also a 125 version which is a bit cheaper and offers no ABS and a smaller engine but both variants come in the silver tan and black combination. Okay, but at the end of the day, who are these bikes for? Because they're not really priced that low or that technically well equipped. It begs the question, who are the target market for this kind of bikes? They're not really that cheap to buy. And by the time this video is out, you can purchase them in Balintawak, Clarks. Those are their showrooms. This is more of an upscale or premium bike. So there's a big chance you won't see a lot of bikes like yours whenever you're riding it. So that's a good thing if you're that kind of guy who wants to stand out or look unique. So definitely the Mott Motorcycles is for you. But going back to the question, who is this bike for? And personally, I think it's for the enthusiast market or those kind of riders who has more than two bikes. And partially, I think it's also for riders who want a custom bike but don't want to go through the hassle of building a bike from scratch or commissioning a bike that would take equally as long and equally as expensive. So yeah, those are my quick thoughts on the Akita 250cc by Mott Motorcycles all the way from Birmingham, England. So see you guys on the next episode and maybe we'll get our hands on their future new models. So they're launching, I think, a total of six bikes here in the Philippines. And I'm particularly interested in the Razorback, which kind of looks like a Venduro. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And I'll see you guys in the next episode.